Hi, it's Bobby from Fifth Avenue Cake Designs. And if you were with me a few days ago, you saw that I did a hand painted cherry blossom cake with cherry blossoms uh, made of flower paste on there. Some of the cherry blossoms were individually petaled, such as these. They all had buds going through them. And some were just these, which is done with a single five petal cutter. So I am going to show you how to do the cherry blossoms because I promised you that I would. Okay, so we're back and this is the single blossom. And when I say single, I mean it's done with one cutter that has five petals on it and some stamens. I went ahead and put the, in, the different blossoms onto an 18 gauge wire just so it would look prettier. But I'm going to show you how I did this particular one, which I call a single cherry blossom because they're not individual petals. So let me show you how I did this. So what you want to begin with is you want to make yourself um, a stamen. And you want to grab a bunch of stamens. They usually come double seeded. These actually were purple, and I went ahead with some um, plum sugar flare petal dust and dusted them this dark pink color because cherry blossoms stamens are dark and they come up above the petals which was um, something that surprised me actually but what you want to do is make a loop onto your sta onto your wire put your stamens through the loop so that they're in a V shape and then go ahead and tape them down the wire so that the wire is right here, and the tape is starting right here, and your blossom is going to come to right here, but I'll show you that as we do it. So you want to start with one of these, and I used for this a 26 gauge wire and 1 fourth inch white floral tape. So what we need for this project is a we're going to do a Mexican hat, and you can do it one of two ways. You can either use a just a plain foam Mexican hat by Cell Sticks, or you can use the Cell Stick Groove Board. I actually like using both, and I'm going to show you why. I can get a thinner, or I can achieve a thinner blossom by doing it with this board, cutting it on my cutter, and then binding it on my cell pad and I'll explain why in a minute. So we're going to take a little bit of gum paste and you don't need a lot for the for the individual blossoms. Now I do not have a cherry blossom cutter so I am using Orchard Products um, Primrose Cutter which ended up working out perfectly. I actually do not like to buy a zillion cutters when I can use cutters that I already have um, in my stash, in my stock. So um, that's what I did for this. So we're going to condition the gum paste, which I'm doing right now with a little bit of um, Trex, or you can use Crisco, or some sort of um, vegetable fat. And then I'm just going to kind of roll it into a ball that I smash. And this hole right here, you're going to see three holes on your groove board, is where I'm going to just push this down. I'm going to grab a medium cell stick, and I'm just going to bring it out super thin. Now, I could do this on the cell stick foam pad, and it would be fine. What I found when I did that was because I did not have because this is hard, so I couldn't get as much tension. I wasn't able to achieve that with the foam pad. I was not impressed with the petals that I made. So we're going to remove this. And because it's so thin, I'm going to go in with a little palette knife. And as you can see, I have like a little dimple. I want my dimple to face up. And I'm going to come in with my cutter. I'm not too concerned that this is rolled in such an odd design because I'm just going to cut out my cherry blossom. 
I'm rubbing it against my workspace so that when I cut it away, I don't have those weird hairs that sometimes you can get when you are using gum paste and you go to cut. Now, because of this type of cutter, I do have to poke a little bit to get it out. It came out nicely. This is where you will need the foam pad. Now, if you only have a foam pad, don't sweat it. Just use it. It'll be fine. You're going to want to stick it in. And I went ahead and did that really fast. You want to stick it in the medium hole on the soft side. Just do a little bit of pushing in, not too much. And right now we're just going to soften out these petals. And I'm going to give them a little bit more of a open look because the cherry blossom has more of an open, I don't want to say a heart look, but it has a little indentation at the top there. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to take our Dresden tool and we're going to go ahead and use the Dresden tool to vein the cherry blossom. all the way around. So that is a five petal blossom and because the blossom has almost like two petals per is what I like to say, you want to make sure to get both sides. So once you're happy with what you achieve, just give it a little bit more of a push. Gently pop it out onto your hand. It should come up pretty easily. And then what I like to do, because we are going to be going up quite a bit of that thick tape there. And if you look at a cherry blossom, the center is is pretty, um, the, the stamens in there are pretty thick. So I'm going to make a little hole. I want to be very careful that because I have the side is pointy, they do not go through my bottom. And then I'm going to take a little bit of egg white. I have found egg white is probably the best glue that you can use. And I'm going to stick it straight into the hole. I'm going to try not to get it around the sides because I'm going to be petal dusting that with that dark plum and then coming up with a baby pink. So you're going to take your cherry blossom up through a little bit through the tape. If this is a little bit too low. You do want those stamens to be higher. And it does take a little bit of finesse to get it through there without ripping it. So we're going to go ahead and do that and get it up there. Now remember, this bottom part is going to be the hip and part of the calyx of your cherry blossom. It's all in one for this one. There we go. So you don't want to rip it. Once you get to this point, the best thing to do is to take a little bit of cornstarch onto your hand and just kind of mold it around your tape stamen. Now remember that you are going to be bringing brown tape around your blossoms because cherry blossoms are on a brown branch that you could probably put in or you can put in a little bit of your dark plum petal dust and some apple green to give it a more realistic look. But you want to get this to, to really become attached kind of mold it around until it is there. Once it's there, you kind of want you want to fold in your petals and just make them have movement so that they lay however you want. Remember you don't want them all laying the same way. I seem to dry, have dried out my bottom more than I wanted to, so I'm going to grab a little bit of my Trex and recondition that gum paste just a little bit to get it to adhere a little better. So depending on whether your gum paste is dry or wet, we'll decide upon whether or not you want to use cornstarch or vegetable fat. Once you have it attached and you're happy, 
you're going to want to put it upside down so that it can dry nicely upside down. So what I usually do is hang it down on a drying rack or you can use um, the handle to your cabinet. So let's go and dust it. Alright, so I'm taking a little bit of my plum petal dust by Sugar Flare and I am going to color the rose hip which is right here. That part of your cherry blossom is fairly dark and of course we want to keep it as realistic as possible. So I'm going to color it as dark as I believe it needs to be. For a touch of realism if you want, you can take a little bit of a green and just add it in there because there is a little bit of green. Not a lot, it mostly has that dark, dark pink color. The other part that you need to remember in a cherry blossom is it's extremely dark right in here. It's actually the stamens and where they sit, but we're just going to give it an illusion that the stamens are going down. So you just kind of want to pounce that in. You don't want to hurt your gum paste flowers. And then for the rest of the cherry blossom, you're just going to bring in, and what I did was mixed a fairy pink with a baby pink, or in this case Cosmo pink, and I felt the Cosmo pink was a little bit darker than I wanted for the cherry blossom, so I brought in a little fairy pink, which also added a little bit of um, sparkles. But if you wanted to keep it without the sparkles and just add your baby pink, you could mix it with a little bit of Elderwise or some um, cornstarch, something to lighten it up. I usually like to mix it or a white. I like the Elderwise because it doesn't get overly white and it doesn't take out too much color. But whatever you have that's of a white nature will be fine. Don't forget to get the back of your petals. and You always want to start from your petal and go down. Like so. So that you're not getting too much color in that center area. And I do like to color my petals while they're still somewhat wet. This happens to be a little bit more wet than I would normally color a petal but the one that I had already prepared for you had a little accident. So we're just going to make do with what we have. It'll still come out beautiful. I just have to be extremely careful with where those petals go. So that's it. That's all you have to do. Once this is completely dry and ready, you can go ahead and add on three or four more of them. They grow in bunches. I would probably do up to five and bring them in with your brown floral tape as you saw in the beginning. Thank you for joining me. If you want to learn more about doing the individual petals, I have a downloadable video at FifthAvenueCakeDesigns.com. So here you have your cut cherry blossom with your one cutter to make your cherry blossom. And this would be a filler flower if you were doing I don't know, a cake that, you know, you wanted to have just little filler flowers around or you just wanted some to go against the cake or to do something with royal icing. And then here you have your individually petaled cherry blossom where you could use it as your focal flower, which I did for the hand-painted cake, or you could use as an accent flower, but it's not so much a filler flower anymore because it's been brought out to be bigger. So it's pretty much up to you what you want to do. Before you do add it to your cake, you will want to steam in that color so that when you put it on your cake, you don't have dust falling onto your beautiful 
white or off-white cake or even a pink cake. You don't want pieces of dust getting in there. It was a pleasure to do this tutorial for you. Cherry blossoms are special and dear to my heart, so I'm glad I had a chance to share them with you.